And good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, beloved. I want to welcome you to um, our community check-in. Uh, I want to give you all time to come in, give you all time to get the notification, uh, give you all time to file in. So let me talk to those of you who may not be watching this live. If you're watching this later, uh, thank you. Uh, but you may want to skip if uh, you don't want to have all the preliminaries, the, the, the hellos and the question of the day and the banter that we could do uh, back and forth. Uh, that's a fine. If you want to get right into the word and into the prayer, then you may want to fast forward about 15 to 20 minutes and get right into the word and prayer. So please feel free if you don't end up watching this live to fast forward now, if you're live you don't have no choice you stuck with me until we get to the word and into the prayer and so i want to again say welcome to community check-in you all are filing in uh let me go ahead and i am going to begin by sharing my live and i want to encourage you as you come in to please like and to please share um and i want to encourage you all right, that's me finding the broadcast, and now I am about to go in and share. If you would, would you do me a favor and be a witness today and not just a worshiper? Um, I'm sharing, and I'm just saying news feed. Um, just want to say check in with me. All right, there's my share, there's my share, and um, now let me go ahead and get to this question of the day. Let's do a fun question of the day. Um, a good one this not nothing to do with the word today but this is my question i got a, i got a good question of the day i'm first to um good i'm excited about this y'all i'm excited about this question of the day today um hold on i need to i need to, to uh ed there we go all right all right all right all right oh my goodness y'all up in here deep today okay let's go let's let's get to our hellos uh let me say hello to yolanda davis it's good to see you today good afternoon i love that purple heart good afternoon to you george green George Green, you were sharp at death Sunday. Thank you. you sir. George Green's on our praise team, y'all. And I just want to tell I don't know if I got a chance to tell you. You look really good Sunday. You were sharp on this past Sunday. Deborah Nicholson Jackson, my cousin. Not for real, but for play. But I love it because we both have the last name Jackson. Michelle Gordon, it's good to see you today. I'm glad to have you. Uh, Miss Irene Smith, blessed to have you. One of my favorite Floridians. Gloria Martin, so glad to see you today. Um, Morel K, good afternoon to you. Patricia Cleese, always a delight. Always makes me happy to see you. Um, there's Amy Cowherd, good afternoon. Speaking to us from YouTube. Uh, and, oh, look at this. Deborah Nicholson Jackson, you're celebrating your 42nd anniversary. Would everybody stop what you are doing? And say, happy, it's our anniversary, anniversary, happy anniversary. That's wonderful. Black love makes me excited. 
makes me happy. I want to say happy anniversary, you Deborah Nicholson Jackson. And everybody, would you stop what you're doing and tell Miss Deborah Nicholson Jackson and Mr. Jackson happy anniversary. Miss Sandra Manassas, good to see you from Columbus. Always glad to see you. Um, George Green, I have you when it comes to prayer requests. I see your prayer requests. Uh, Gloria Martin, thank you for being here. Good to see you today. We're pleased to see you. Um, Regina Connor, Regina, thank you again. You helped uh, facilitate and provide food for uh, the little birthday celebration for me this past Sunday, and I I'm so grateful. And speaking of another person who did this, is Karen Valdez. Thank y'all so much. You all have blown me away with your love and your kindness. And listen, I ate every single piece of my plates. Uh, that's not true. I'm not eating the cake shit. I'm trying to, trying to y'all know I'm dealing with weight now. So I'm trying to take this these sweets a little bit at a time. Uh, I'm going to come back and get to these happy anniversaries. But let me get everybody who said hi. Um, my brother Jorge from YouTube, good to see you today. Yolanda, it's always good to see you. Um, oh, there's Dr. Evelyn Ellis. So good to see you today. And Ebony Dixon Collins. It was good to see you and Will this Sunday at church. Um, and now I think I can get these up. Oh, there's one more. Good afternoon. Uh, Lisa Norwood. Good to see you. And Florel Gallagher Florel. It's good to see you. TJ Anderson from YouTube. Oh my goodness. I like this. I like this. I don't know what exactly this uh, picture you have is, but I like it. I like it. I like it. All right, y'all. Let me get to these happy anniversaries. Today, uh, Deborah Nixon Jackson is celebrating, celebrating 42 years of love. Y'all, for those of us who hadn't made it, amen. Uh, many of y'all know I, 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 I talk in sincerity, but I have to joke about it too. I'm twice divorced. So whenever I see long lasting love, I'm in awe. And I mean that in the most profound way. I'm, I'm, I, I'm, I'm always happy to see love that has lasted. And so let's just give God some praise. Okay. Um, who's the first happy anniversary? Here's one. Michelle Gordon says happy anniversary. Let's get all of these happy anniversaries. Um, Karen Valdez wishes you happy anniversary. I'm sure you see it, but I want to make sure I put them all because I know you can't see YouTube. So Amy Cowherd says happy anniversary. And I know you saw Yolanda Davidson and Yolanda Ellis Taylor. And um, George Green says congratulations. And Meryl Kay and Lisa Gonzalez and George Green again. And uh, Patricia Cleves. And, right, we're going to take time to say happy anniversary after 42 years. For those of you who are coming in, we are wishing Deborah Nicholson Jackson um, a happy, happy, happy anniversary. Amen. And I see you saying thank you so much. Let me get your thank you in. We praise God for your gratitude. Gloria Martin says happy anniversary. Patricia Merritt Burton. I love your Facebook. Uh, what is it called? Is it Avatar? Profile picture. Profile picture. Miss Patricia um, Merritt Burton. Thank your son again for coming Saturday. He took me by surprise. I, I, you know, I'm in the middle of working and just somebody came, hey, uh, I want to put up the banners. And I was excited. I, I knew they had to be connected to the church, but when I first saw him, it didn't register that it was your son. And so I didn't say, hey, I'm Bashan, but I was very delighted and excited and please send your child, your son, out my regards and tell him thank you for taking time out of his schedule to serve. I, that's a service. And so I praise God for him. Um, okay, TJ is Julia Anderson. Julia Anderson, I love that picture then. Uh, I loved, I love that picture. Uh, another happy anniversary is there and another happy anniversary. All right, let's get into the question of the day. Let's get into the question. Y'all shared y'all live. I hadn't put the banner up. Let me put the banner up. I just feel like when I put the banner up, it encourages you better. Please take a moment if you've not liked to hit that like button. You know, YouTube is starting to take over more. We almost started to have as many people on YouTube as Facebook, and I love it. Uh, we're over 300 subscribers now, and I praise God. We were praying for that milestone. Uh, there's another happy anniversary. Good to see Jorge chiming in. Um, but please take a moment. We're about to get into our question of the day for a little bit and then go into our word. Would you take a moment to like and share this live? I would greatly appreciate it. Here's the question of the day. 
We're going to talk about tattoos. Yeah, we're going to talk about tattoos. Uh, many of you might not know this. I don't have any tattoos. I Actually, it's not that I'm against tattoos. Um, I said I'm going to get a tattoo, and I don't know when I'm going to get one, but I said I am going to get one. Um, but what I also said, I want to get something that's profoundly meaningful. I want to get something that's profoundly meaningful. I said this before, I want to get multiple tattoos. So here we go. Here we go. Um, um, this one, this is our question of the day. Tell me about your tattoos, real or imaginary. So if you have any tattoos or a tattoo, if you have a tattoo, it's easy. What's your favorite tattoo? Or the one tattoo you have. But if you don't have any tattoos, here's where you come in. If you were made to get one, what would you get? If you were made to get one, what would you get? One of the tattoos that I would get, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Um, y'all go into this question. Y'all answer the, answer the question of the day. I got to get prayer requests. But I want to tell you all about, uh, I've told you all this before, actually. So maybe we've had, I don't know if we've had this question before, but tell me about your tattoos. Tell me about your tattoos. Um, and I am getting your prayer request. Okay. Let me start from the very beginning. So I don't miss any. I'm getting prayer requests. You are telling me about your tattoos, real or imaginary. Um, thank you, Miss. I just feel like I just saw one though. Meryl K. Okay. Meryl K. I have yours. Irene Smith. There you go. Um, I have yours. <coughs> Forgive me, you all just swallowed that a raw bite. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Um, and we're going to... Oh, Lisa, did I say, I say you said it came in there. Good to see you. <clears throat> I missed you. Uh, we're answering this question of the day. I want to know about your tattoos. What's your favorite tattoo? If you have one, if you don't have any tattoos like me, if you were made to get one, what would you get? Thank you so much, uh, Amy. Um. <coughs> Thank you so much. I have your prayer request. Um, for those of you all who are coming in, we're talking about tattoos, and then we're getting to the word of the day. But I am making sure I have all the prayer requests. Lorene Simmons, thank you so much. <clears throat> Lorraine Simmons, Lorraine. Oh, there. Oh, okay. I got that. I got that. I got TJ. Got your hello. Um, Yolanda, thank you so much. I have your prayer request. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much. I have Nakia Ford, Miss Sandra Manessa, for thank you so much for your prayer request. Um, We definitely have mom, Helen Calhoun, in our prayers. Thank you, George. Um, <clears throat> absolutely. Thank you so much. The Bird family, thank you so much. Um, 
Deacon Patricia Burden. <clears throat> All right, I love it. I love. Okay, I love the. Okay, we we doing a good job with these answers. All right, got one more prayer request. Let me just say, Natalie, you said hello, so I want to put that up there. And then I have your family. Um, and I have you as well. Um, Lisa, I have you. <clears throat> All right. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited about these answers. Let's get into this chat and let's see our answers. I love it. I love it. I love it. Okay. Question of the day for those of you who are just coming in. It's right down at the bottom. Tell me about your tattoos, real or imaginary. What's your favorite tattoo? Or if you were made to get one, what would you get? And so, um, <clears throat> here we go. Deborah Nicholson Jackson says, always wanted an angel on my shoulder. You know what, Miss Deborah Jackson? You and your husband should get matching tattoos for your 42nd anniversary. That's right. You tell him Pastor Jackson said, I know Toria is going to agree. Uh, you and your husband should get matching tattoos. That's what I'm, I'm suggesting it. I'm believing it. Um <clears throat> Oh, thank you. Um, I'm believing it, and I am confessing. So I love this. I always wanted an angel on my shoulder. You should get that now. Maybe maybe uh, Mr. Jackson get an angel on his, but that's what I'm going for. Look at that. She's laughing at me, y'all. She's laughing at me. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm dead serious, though. At least give my suggestion. And if y'all do it, I want to be tagged in the Facebook post when y'all post them and let me know. I'll just, you know what? I almost said something. I'll, y'all. Y'all, I promise. I had a flashback, y'all. I had a flashback. You know what I was about to say? <laughs> she said he hates me. I, I, that quick, I almost about to say, oh, just tell him to get something to have something to drink first. But I've heard, this is what I've heard, you're not supposed to drink when you get tattoos because it makes your blood, it makes your, the tattoo more bloody. It makes your blood flow more. Uh, I play football, y'all. I got all kinds of people that got tattoos, all kinds of tattoo stories. Okay, I understand. Still giving my suggestion. Still giving my suggestion about um, y'all getting matching tattoos. Um, <clears throat> all right. I got lost just that quick. Uh, Deborah Nicholson Jackson always wanted. Okay. Evelyn Ellis says, I will not get one, but if I did, it would be a musical note. I like it. I like it. I want to do a body art thing that is painted on. Let's do it then. Do it and post it. And well, you I don't know if you're on Facebook or Instagram, but Julia, if your mama gets a body art thing that's painted on, that's the that's what y'all to do for 2022. Get you something, Barty, and I want to see the picture. I want to see the picture. Um <clears throat> George Green chimes in. I have a cross on my arm with my children's name on it, but I'm about to get another one before the summer. I like it. For those of you all coming with talking tattoos. Don't forget to like and share. Matter of fact, let me put that ticker up. I know y'all, some of y'all's mind is like mine is bad. Uh, <clears throat> and you might be forgetting. We're talking about tattoos. George says he has a cross on his arm. What's your favorite tattoo? J okay, I would get a half sleeve tattoo of my grandmother's name and my face on my upper. I was just about to ask. Upper sleeve is going to be lower upper. Upper right arm, I got that. I would get a half sleeve tattoo of my grandmother's name and face. I like that. Jorge, I like that. I like that. Tracy Lindsay has a tattoo. She says, my tattoo is my deceased partner's name. Okay. Keisha, correct? Keisha Williams? Is that? Am I right about that? And I am. I'm, absolutely, I'm keeping you in prayer. And I'm keeping all of her loved ones in prayer. Um, we're talking about tattoos, beloved. We're talking about tattoos. One of my favorite tattoos is my sister friend's tat. Okay. Um, love it, love it, love it, love it. I like that. I like that. Jay Alexander comes as and as Zandifer, uh comes in. I have a goat and my birthday. I'm a Capricorn. I don't want any more. I was thinking may get them removed. Okay, okay. If you had to choose, which is your favorite, the goat or your birthday? 
if you had to keep one and get rid of one, if you could only get rid of one, you think about getting rid of them, but if you only could get rid of one, which one would you keep? That's what I want to know, Jay. Um, Lisa Norwood comes in, no tattoos, but if I had to, it would be a sunflower, a daisy, or the sun. Lisa, I need you to choose. You know, we don't do that at Community Check-In. Pick one and come into the comment. All right, Jay Alexander says he would keep the goat. Keep the goat. I like it. I like it. Lisa, I need to know. You got to pick one of those three. Um, <clears throat> Jorge says, I have a not a tattoo person. I like the art of it, but it would not be something that I would do myself. I get that. I get that. I get that. Irene Smith says, my tattoo is on my left leg. Betty Boo, I like that. Acquired at the age of 49. Love her because she's so sexy. Yes, Betty Boo is. Is she like, isn't she almost like the first sexy cartoon? First animated figure? I like it. I like that. Irene Smith, the Betty Boo. At age 49, okay, on your left leg. I like it. Morel K says, I have two tattoos, a rose when my cousin passed, double heart sisters forever, S for Sharon. Okay, and M, oh, you know, you're touching me right now. Marsha Gillian, we just celebrated her birthday and her passing. Her birthday and her passing is right around the same time. Uh, and, 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 and that's been dear to my heart. You all, as you're coming in, we're talking about tattoos. Tell me about your tattoos, real or imaginary. What's your favorite tattoo? If you were made to get one, what would you get? <clears throat> I just got that one. Um, Lisa, try to limit my interaction with needles. But if I was forced to get one, thank you so much. It would be Dr. Gonzalez on my... <laughs> oh, Lisa, you know, good way. If you... Now, if you're scared of interacting with needles, you know, put no tattoo on your forehead. But I love it. I love it. I'll take it. Um, Julia comes in. I have my Constellation Leo. That was actually done by my partner and matches hers. Cancer. Okay, I like it. And I have a little blue dinosaur. Okay, y'all, Julia. Let's see, I get excited about it. That's creative. A blue. Why blue? Di why the color blue? Why the dinosaur? Would you go into the comments? Sonya Harper's coming in here and says, hello. Good to see you, Sonya. Uh, we're talking about tattoos. Tell me about your favorite tattoo. If you have a tattoo, what's your favorite? If you don't, what would you get if you were made to get one? Right now, I'm fascinated because Julia says she has a blue dinosaur named Horace. I want to know, is blue your favorite color? Why blue? And why, um, why the dinosaur? This is imaginary. Okay. The world, I guess the, a globe with children of every race circling the globe with a small heart in the center of the globe. Now, Karen, let me say this. You might be specific not to have a tattoo now. I mean, maybe God is trying to tell you something because that's mighty specific. That's mighty specific not to uh, have one. Maybe you need to get go on and get one, y'all. We talking tattoos. We're about to get into the word. Just having a fun conversation. Our question of the day is, I want to know if you have a tattoo, what's your favorite? If you don't have a tattoo, what would you get if you were made to get tattoos? Ebony chimes in. I have two tattoos. One was random and just because. The other was more intentional. It's footprint. Okay, I like it. it represents footprints in the sand that God will always be beside me. Um, I like this. I like this. Um, Yolanda says, I remember having one of the ones that came. In <laughs> this is funny. They did a little serve a little tattoo. Maybe you need to go get that Cracker Jack box. We need to get that, let Miss Evelyn get a, a musical note from a Cracker Jack box. Um, that is too funny. Julia says, I want a blue graffiti lion on my Achilles calf. Now, I heard that it hurt down there on Achilles that I tore playing rugby in honor of that and the Penn State and then like, oak. Oh, Mm, you are Penn State Nittany Lion. Okay. I like it. 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 Patricia Deacon Burton says, I don't have any, but if I had to, it would be charm for my parents. Okay, for my parents' initials or my children and grand. I, I like that. I like that. One word I would tattoo on. Now, now, Deacon Burton. See, y'all, y'all give me. Y'all got so many great, all oh, y'all don't have tattoos. Y'all have so many great ideas. Just one word, grateful. Maybe you should just go get that, Deacon Burton, just real small. Or like right here, just grateful or something like that. Yeah, I like it. I don't know why I'm trying to make y'all get tattoos today, but I love it. Tamara, good to see you. 
Uh, glad you you can't chime in, but glad you at least told us hello. Thank you so so much. Um, Leo Vicini below, meaning victorious lion, because that's our team motto. And I overcame. So so oh, you play rugby at Penn State, Julian? I like this, Julian. If you play rugby at Penn State, y'all gotta have a game somewhere on film, and that's your next to do. I still have your playlist on my playlist. And I listened to it a couple of times, and I enjoyed it. I need a, I need film of you playing rugby. I need film of you playing rugby. I'm excited about this. Y'all know I'm a sports guy. I can watch almost any sport, probably any sport for a little bit. But I'm I I have a friend whose daughter plays rugby, and so I ought to at least uh, try to get y'all connected. But okay, I want to watch you play rugby. I think that's phenomenal. Um. Patricia Cleves, I do have a tattoo, but if I had to get one, it would be a broken heart, okay, with my parents' and siblings' name in it. Y'all are so creative. Y'all are so creative. Y'all, for those of you coming in, we're talking tattoos. Uh, this is our question for the day. We're just having fun. Don't be too holy for this. Don't be too holy. We're talking tattoos. Tell me about your tattoo, real or imaginary. So if you're coming in, if you have tattoos, tell me your favorite one. If you don't have any tattoos and you're coming in, Tell me if you were made to get one, what would you get? Next tattoo for Amy is hashtag God Bride. I like it. I like it. Michelle. Okay, Michelle. Yeah, I can't. Yo, let me sit up here because you can't even see me because all this you're talking about. Uh-uh. You know what? I'm not doing it. I okay, I got to do it. I have five, five tattoos. On my upper arm is my high school name. And the year I graduated, on my left calf is Tash from Looney Tunes with my daughter's name under it. Okay, on my right calf is a purple rose. We love purple with a dagger going through a red heart. Okay, Michelle, my nickname, Pebbles, on my right upper leg, a name across my heart, which I'm getting replaced. Okay, <laughs> I would be messy. But tell us what the name is, uh, Michelle. It's all on your chest, so we want to know what the name is. My favorite would be the one that will replace that name across my heart because it will be my husband's name with a green rose. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. We talking tattoos, y'all. We talking tattoos. Um, Sonya comes in. I have an infinite sign with love that matches my daughter's first tattoo on my ankle. She talked me into it. Come on, Asia. Let's start persuading people around here. I'm with it. I am with it. Here we go, Blue Dinosaur explanation. Blue Dinosaur reminded me of one of my special education students, my first one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, look at that, Julia. His favorite color was blue, and he was obsessed with Jurassic World. I like it. I like it. All right, y'all, uh, this is mine. Uh, I've told you all before, I plan, I want to get a tattoo. I've also told you that I want multiple things on it. So whenever I get my tattoo, somewhere on the tattoo will be the number 20. That was my college football number. My son, my, my baby sister wore 20 because I wore 20. My son wears 20 uh, on the ultimate Frisbee team. We big in the 20. Um, I, a friend of mine, wasn't really a girlfriend. You know, it's college, y'all, but a friend of mine uh, in college uh, gave me a good rationale because I had 20. Uh, this is so, uh, y'all, this is about to be really messy. <laughs> I talk too much, but here we go. My girlfriend, I had a long distance girlfriend uh, named Kiki uh, who lived in Texas. Uh, love Kiki to death. Love Kiki to death. Kiki bought me a gold 20 pendant with a gold chain. And I think I was wearing it. Okay, this is just how crazy it was in college. So Kiki and I had an open relationship. And the deal was when I was in Atlanta and she started off at Dillard, but then went to North Texas. I'm talking too much. We could see other people. We had some restrictions and boundaries around seeing other people. We could see other people. When we came home for the summers, when we came home, we could not see other people. That was the deal of our relationship. So I think I was wearing 20 and I was talking to this girl at Spelman dating her. Now, everybody I talked to at Spelman, just for the record, I was honest about I had a girlfriend. I had, you know, in my apartment, I had me and her picture up. Uh, I never took it down. It's like if I had company, I wouldn't take my uh, picture of my girlfriend down. Everybody who dated me did know I was in an open relationship. So I was honest. I was honest, uh, at least about that. I don't want to tell you I ain't never lied. But um, 
But a friend of mine who I was talking to at Spelman gave me the idea that 20 means second to none. I ran with that for the rest of my college career. Uh, that and for, to this day, one of the reasons I love 20 uh, is I, I, I swear it means second to none. So my tattoo would need the number 20. Uh, my tattoo would need, I am going to get, in fact, there is a sign. Let's see if I can find a bigger sign of our logo. Let's do this. Okay. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Do you all see this? This It's an African symbol in the O of love. That African symbol, that African symbol um, means it's a West African symbol that represents the power of love. Uh, it, it, somebody says it literally means love never loses its way home. Love never loses its way home. That would be that's going to be on my tattoo. The number twenty, that symbol. Look at y'all. Y'all are so messy. <laughs> Look, I love this. Julius congratulating. Amy's getting popcorn. Jay getting popcorn. That's hilarious. All right, there we go. Zach is the name getting replaced with Brian. Thank you, Michelle, for that. Okay. So I will have number 20. I need I need that symbol. Of course, somewhere I've got to have Bryce. I'm not going to get his initials because we have the same initial. Maybe I should, but no, because I want to be specific to Bryce. Both Bryce and I have B-A-J, um, it are our initials. So I'll need something for Bryce. Um, though I know those three things. Um, so I've got to find, at some point, I will need to find somebody who could draw me something. That could have the number 20, that symbol. I need something for Bryce. I might do a couple other things. I'm not sure. Uh, if anybody has my follows my Instagram or knows my email, I'm Bashan SSC. I might put SSC in there. That's my crew of boys from high school, and I love them. So that's I don't I don't have specifics of what it would look like, but I know what it would include. That's my tattoo. That's my story, and I am sticking with it. Um I'm praying for, okay, thank you so much, Sonia. I see you, and I am putting it down right now. Um, I'm, I'm going to put the family and loved ones. Um, I know I do. I know I do. I'm just glad my mom ain't here today, y'all. I'm just glad my mama are not here. My mom is not here today. Way too much. But you know, it feels better because it's only many years ago. Sonya, it was 20 years ago. You know, come on. Uh, <laughs> um, all right, let's get into the word. Let's get into the word. Um, today's word, today's word. Do me a favor. If you've not shared, if you've not liked or shared, would you do me a favor and like and share? Y'all, you know what I need help with? I forgot the exact title of what I wore today, so I've got to go look. Um, ah, that's right. Okay. Smaller is sometimes better. Um, smaller is sometimes better. Oh, Tam, come back. Look here. Come back. Get the word. It's going to be recorded. I'm so sorry. Get to your appointment. I'm about to get to the word right now, though. Um, and here we go. Here we go. Smaller is sometimes better. Be really brief because I'm running over time. But here's what I want to share with you all. We're in a series in church on Sundays about worship. We're in a series about worship. And one of the things I shared on Sunday is one of the things that's so beautiful about worship. One of the things reasons I highly recommend worship. Now, I'm always sensitive when we get to talking about worship because to some degree, I do believe that Christianity in its current form and in a lot of its more popular renditions today has become too worship centric. In other words, in other words, what do you mean by that? It's become too worship centric. Uh, we've kind of acted as if worship is one of the best things that we can do uh, in our relationship, 
our relationship with God. I mean, we very we worship heavy now in Christianity. If you hear preaching, there's uh, especially this idea of praise. Sometimes preachers, and I'm not gonna mention any names, but one I think one of the most gifted preachers right now in the world. Uh, one of my irritations about one of these this preacher, and it is emblematic of many preachers, is a lot of the sermons almost become. Um, cheering and pushing people to praise almost as if praise is somehow a panacea to life y'all i believe in praise i believe in praise jane powell would you do me a favor i'd be happy to pray for your daughter-in-law would you do me a favor and put her name um in the if unless you didn't unless you intentionally left her name out and that's fine i'll just say jane powell's daughter-in-law but if you're willing to put her name in the comments i would love to have her name um but i believe in praise but I think a lot of times, listen to this, preachers are preaching to hype people more than help people. Stop, rewind, play. One of my own personal criticisms of the Christian landscape and a lot of popular Christianity in its current form is that a lot of preachers um, are preaching praise, honestly, because it makes them feel good to make people shout. It makes them feel good to make people stand up. It makes them feel good to make people say amen and all that. And listen, you all, I love, look, I mean, I'm a preacher. I love call and response. Of course it feels good when people start standing in the sermon. Of course it feels good when people are shouting. And I mean, every preacher has an ego. And so of course in your mind, there is something that, that, that blesses your ego about people responding and giving energy to your messages. And because of this, preachers sometimes, and I'll say it again, have begun to use praise and worship as this thing that is almost like the pinnacle of Christianity. And praise and worship is necessary. It is essential to our spirituality. But it's not a panacea, and it's not a pinnacle. But I want to talk about why I think worship is important. And I gave it to you all this past Sunday. I really believe, I really believe one of the reasons worship is important is because when we commit to taking time out, when we commit to taking time out to reverence and honor God, we have to take a moment. We have to take a moment. We have to take a moment when we're reverencing and honoring God to recognize that there's something in the world bigger than us. That's one of the importance of worship. And so worship shouldn't always be about hyping people up or getting people hyped. Worship ought to be about really, really finding ourselves in the midst of recognizing the bigness of God. We ought to have time out to remember how big God is. how big God is. It's sometimes in the sense of worship to remember how small we are, to remember how small we are. But here's what I want to tell you, and I'm through. I, short word, short word, but a powerful word, I believe. I believe this, that there's something beautiful. Yes, there's something beautiful, Yolanda, about recognizing that when we come into the house of God, we're reminded, especially, and this is for those of us who are successful, we need to be reminded that there's something bigger than us. That there's something bigger than us that is responsible for this world, that is responsible for sustaining us, that is responsible for keeping us, that is responsible for preserving us, that is responsible for, for um, 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 delivering us. There's something bigger than us that is responsible for redeeming us. Worship reminds us that there's something bigger. Why is that important? Here's one reason, and I'm going to let you all go. In life, all of us have some area and arena of our life that is bigger than us in a negative way. All of us have something that we go through that we struggle with, that we've not been able to overcome, that is bigger than us.
Can I just talk to you for a while? If you've never been able to be faithful in a relationship, then relational and sexual promiscuity is bigger than you. And yes, beloved, we know there are some people who've never been able to be faithful in any relationship they've ever been in. Relational promiscuity is bigger than us. If you've never been able to control your diet, then your eating is bigger than you. If, if you've never been able to maintain an exercise regime, then keeping your health is bigger than you. There are those of us in our community, in our families that have diabetes, high blood pressure, and they cannot seem to eat well and exercise to get it together. Our health sometimes, or lack thereof, becomes bigger than us. Some of us have never defeated sadness. That's not a negative thing. It's a reality. I have friends who deal with and probably will for the rest of their life chronic depression. I'm thinking of a sister right now who's a black woman and theologian who writes a book, a powerful book called Bipolar Faith, who also struggles with bipolar. Mental health in some sense is bigger than us. If any of us have ever struggled with addiction, if any of us have ever struggled with addiction, our addiction, anybody knows this, is bigger than us. If you've never been able to discipline yourself in some area or arena of your life, discipline is bigger than you. If you've never been able to control your anger and your anger all can always get the best of you, even if you've gotten better with it, anger is bigger than you. And here's what I want to tell you. All of us have something that we've not yet conquered. All of us have something that we've not yet won the victory over. And I don't want to know your business. I don't want you to go into the comments, but I just want you to realize and think about for a while the thing or the things, plural, that are bigger than you. In the midst of having to live a life where we are challenged with things that are bigger than us, here's what I want to tell you, and I'm through. Every now and then, it is important to be reminded that with all these things, all these life challenges that are bigger than me, I want to be reminded that there's at least one thing bigger than me that is on my side. I'm trying to help somebody today. When we go into worship, we come into this place where we recognize God is bigger than us. But every now and then, we need to be reminded that there is something bigger than us that is on our side. Every now and then, in the midst of our struggles with addiction, in the midst of our struggles with depression, in the midst of our struggles with our health, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, in the midst of our struggles with our discipline, it is good to be reminded that there is something bigger than us that is not attacking us but that is defending us. Every now and then, it's good to be reminded that there's something bigger than us that doesn't want our death, but wants our life. Every now and then, it's important to be reminded that there's something bigger than us that's not destroying us, but that's creating us. Something bigger than us that cares for our well-being. Something bigger than us that's rooting for our success. Something bigger than us that's perfecting us. Something's bigger than us that is working for our good. Every now and then, it is good to be reminded that there's something bigger than us that wants to heal our body, that wants to lift our burdens, that wants to solve our problems, that wants to answer our question, that wants to defeat our enemies, that wants to tackle our challenges, that wants to open doors. Worship is sometimes smaller, is better when something bigger than you is on your side. That's all I got today. But I want to remind you, you ought to, you are not, you are not shun worship. You are not shun worship because worship reminds us that there is something, there is someone bigger than us that's on our side. Every head bowed, every eye closed, every heart praying. God, today we come to you because we love you. We honor you, God. But honestly, God, we come to you, God, because you're bigger than us.
That's why we're com combined today. That's why that's why we're connecting virtually today, God, because, God, we are coming in here today acknowledging. That's why we're here for prayer. That's why we're here for the check in, because we want to be reminded. We want to be pushed. We want to be let it be known that there's something bigger than us, God. Today, we're glad. We're glad that you're bigger than us. But, God, we're also glad that you're bigger than us and that you love us. God, I'm, 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 I'm thankful today, God, that in the midst of the things that I've still not won victories over, I'm thankful today, God, that of the challenges that I still struggle with. I'm thankful today, God, that when I'm not the person I want to be, I'm thankful today, God, that when I'm not doing and living life how I want to live it, I'm thankful today, God, that sometimes when my weaknesses are bigger than my strengths, when my flaws are bigger than my, 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 my best traits, when my foibles and get the best of me, God, I'm, I'm blessed that I can get on my knees and pray and connect with something bigger than me. I'm grateful that I can come into the house of God physically or virtually, and I can worship you and be reminded that my creator is still on my side, that the force that governs the universe still loves me, that the force that uh, th that molded the mountains and pressed valleys wants the best for me, God. And so, God, I need to be reminded of that. And so, God, I'm praying that you would remind each of us how big you are. I'm praying that you would remind each of us how great you are. I'm praying that you would remind each of us how loving you are. That's my prayer today, God. One simple prayer that in the midst of all we're struggling with, in the midst of the things that are conquering us, I'm praying that we would be reminded today, every person who hears this word, every person who watches this community check-in on YouTube or on Facebook, I'm praying for this reminder that you are bigger and you are on our side. I don't just come praying for us today, God. I come praying for all those we've named today. I'm praying for the family and loved ones of Jaki, uh, uh, Sonia Harper's friend and sister. I'm praying for Aaron, Natalie, Ariel, and Nevin Jackson. I'm praying for the Norwood family. I'm praying for William Bird as he struggles from the loss of his son. And I'm praying for the Bird family. I'm praying for Nakia Bird. Nakia Ford, I'm praying for Meredith Dixon, Marvin West, Hazel Patterson, the family of Jocelyn McQuarrie, Star Smith Space, Nicole Cherie. I'm praying for Julia Anderson, Cynthia Wynn Carter, AJ Ellis and DeAndre Ellis. I'm praying God for Reverend James Carter and Yolanda Ellis Taylor. I'm praying for Lorene Simmons and Antonio Cowherd. And I'm praying for the spring break travelers and Reiki Salvant. And I'm praying for Leo Whitted and Dr. Irene Watson and family. For, I'm praying for Helen Cowherd, who's in the hospital, for healing and Amy Cowherd, who's supporting her and being her rock. I'm praying for Charles Kelly and John Kelly and Irene Smith, for Rose Morrell and Nadia Maddox, Lenora Henry, Margaret McBride, Sharon Morrell, Roosevelt and Carol Morrell, D. Honeycutt, Mackenzie Morrell, Roosevelt Morrell, Gina and Phil Honeycutt and Morrell Kay. I'm praying for Deidre Richburg, L. Ann Reese. I'm praying for Larry Carter and Nala Carter. I'm praying for Ashley Douglas and I'm praying for Jonathan Clark. I'm praying for Ruthie Prophet, Lillian K. Cole, Paula Malone, Sandra Joller, Shirley Warren, Samuel Perry, Tracy Blackwell, and James Walker. God, you know each situation. You know each circumstance. You know the person who's hurting that needs your comfort. You know the person who's sick that needs your healing. You know the person who's dying that needs your life. You know the person who's depressed that needs your joy. And so, God, I'm praying that you would be a healer, that you would be a deliverer, and that you would offer breakthrough right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the opportunity of prayer, God. Thank you that you allow us to connect with you. Thank you that in the midst of governing the universe, you still can listen to our pleas and our petitions. Thank you for your divine ears listening to our human human voice. This is my prayer today. I pray it in the loving, liberating, and life-giving name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, beloved, I want to I want to ask for your prayers today. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I waited to the end because I knew I wouldn't be able to ask and not get emotional. Um, you may have heard, uh, I pray uh, for the last few weeks. Uh, um, every time I pray, um, I lift up one of my friends and um, he was my teammate at Morehouse. He was my roommate. He was the best man in both my weddings. Um, he's been struggling with cancer. And last night he lost his battle with cancer at 8.30 p.m. Um, and he passed. Um, I'm asking your prayers for his family. My friend and sister who I've known since I played football at Morehouse, uh, Deidre, 
uh, Richburg, Solomon Richburg. Um, I'm praying that you ask that you pray for his children, um, Elle and Reese, um, who just lost their father in their teenage and pre-teenage years. Um, and um, I'm hurting. Uh, I'm okay. I'm okay because it's okay to hurt and it's okay to grieve. Uh, I'm not upset. I'm just sad. Um, but I really, really would love for you to pray for um, Deidre, uh, Ellen, and Reese. Um, thank you all so much. And I want to thank each and every one of you. Just know as we go today, um, I'm touching and agreeing with you. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Michelle. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Lisa. And I'm touching and agreeing with you, Irene. Uh, I'm touching and agreeing with each and every one of you. Um, let me find my place. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Lisa. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Morel. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Troy. I'm touching and agreeing with you, Yolanda. Um, I'm touching and agreeing with you, Sonia. I'm touching and agreeing with you, um, Valeria and Amy. Uh, thank you, Jorge, for your prayers. Thank all of you for your prayers and emojis. I'm touching and agreeing with all of you. Yolanda, I'm touching and agreeing with you. Thank each and every one of you for your prayers. Uh, thank you for being here. I'll see you all Thursday um, at 12 um, for our next community check-in. Listen, I love each and every one of you. May God bless you. Uh, may God keep you. And please remember to live in love. I'll see you all soon.